Hi everybody, my name is Sherry. Welcome to my stamp studio. I'm really excited about today's card and just to be honest with you, it, um, it took a couple of turns as I was making it and I'll show you um, one of them or a couple of the ideas that I had that didn't work. Um, but sometimes when we create something and I even sent the, the photo to my daughter when I was done, I'm like, is this ugly? Um, but sometimes when you come back to it, when I came back to it the next morning, I was like, oh, I do really like this card. I really like it. But sometimes it's what happens on paper is that what happened in your mind. And so sometimes we just have to let go of it, set it aside and come back. And then you're like, oh yeah, this could be a favorite. So I'm continuing my little series that I didn't really know I was starting um, of making, it's my Christmas in July. But you're going to find that most of the cards I create will not be Christmassy. Um, so I'm taking Christmas sets, winter sets, and switching them up so you can use them in the summer. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, then you can make them your Christmas. Um, you can just not use these little snowflakes. Um, because this is called Peaceful Cabin. And I don't have a catalog here um, because this card is going to take a little bit longer because of all of the coloring. Um, but if you don't have the holiday catalog, if you're one of my customers, you should be getting it this week. Um, in fact, you could be getting it today because they went out on Saturday. But if you don't have somebody sending you one, let me know. And I'd be happy to send you one if you're in the U.S. But this is uh, it's a very, very winter set. The paper is very wintry. Everything in it is um, a peaceful cabin. You can see this um, snow-covered cabin in the woods, a little fox, some snow covered pine trees, but I wanted to use it now and I was determined to get rid of the snow and make it be a year round set. So here's how I did it. Um, first you're gonna take, so my cards are gray granite, um, soft suede, and then some vanillas. So we have three different pieces of vanillas here as we're gonna build our scene. Got dimensional backs everywhere. It's the curse of this job. Um, the dies that come with this set are exceptional. Again, I can't show you the inside of the catalog yet, so make sure you check back on August 3rd. That is the day the catalog kicks off. That day, I will have all of my favorites, all the stuff I've made, and I'll walk you through the catalog so you don't miss anything. So that will post on August 3rd, so you don't wanna miss that. But for this, we need to have, I guess I better make sure I'm using the right piece. And you can see this is bent. I like to use my cardstock that got a little crushed or fell off the table or my cats walked on it or something on cards like this one. I'm going to put them through an embossing folder because that will take care of that right away. So this is my background piece. This is going to be for my trees. And then this is going to be where I stamp my cabin. So let's start with that because I'm going to try to color them all at the same time, which is not how I created the card because I didn't know what it was going to look like after I gave up on my first um, iteration of it. Then after that, I kind of just went piece by piece until I figured out what I wanted to do. But now, since I know what the card's going to look like, I'm using Memento because I am going to use my blends, which are our alcohol markers. They're similar to Copic markers. So I'm going to stamp this, kind of just put it here in the middle. This piece is cut mm, slightly under five inches because that's kind of how the die works. And you're going to love the die when you see it. So it's a really detailed stamp. I'm going to make sure I got everywhere. And because I put the ink on the top of the stamp and didn't smash it down, I know I'm not going to catch any corners. So you can see um, the next card I do with, it, with this will probably be Christmas and it will be much simpler because look how pretty that is just stamped on its own. But it is snow covered. It has snow out here. It has snow all over the top of the roof, snow on the chimney, but we're going to get rid of that snow. So let's start coloring. So the first thing you want to do if you're going to get rid of the snow is this needs to be grassy knolls, correct? Um, so I just picked three colors of, already have ink on my hands, um, three colors of green. So I have life, light soft succulent, um, light evergreen, and light mossy meadow. So these are the three. I don't always blend light colors together. You don't have to. They blend with anything. So let's start by getting rid of the snow. So I'm just going to add some color. I'm going to use a lot of brush tips on this because I'm doing a lot of coloring. So let's get this here. And then over here where I'm going to do my trees, I am going to also color. And we'll come back to these. 
The thing with the tree and the vanilla paper, I started on white paper and that it made it even more difficult. And plus I was going for a masculine card, but it makes it more difficult to hide the snow when you have a white card. Um, so when you do your trees, you want to make sure that there's not a whole lot of vanilla left. Otherwise it'll look like you have some snow on your trees. Now I'm going to, let's do the um, mossy meadow. I have no idea how I did this when I did it. I'm going to make this snow that's up here be bushes. So when you color with your brush tip, you don't want to smash it. So kind of use it on its side. So now every place that was snow now looks like bushes. Add a little bit of this there and then let's go over here. And you can see how this just kind of fills in and gives it a nice fun color. Now with this one, I'm going to take my brush tip, I mean my bullet tip, and kind of whisk this into some little bushy bushes. And we're going for an overall effect. There's going to be a lot going on on this card. So it doesn't have to be perfect. And you can see how all three of these colors blend. It'd be great if you do like military cards or you have the camo stamp. This is a great color combination for those. And it does look a little bit of a hot mess until you're done. But that's okay. We can live with that. So you just want to do your lightest color last and that helps blend them all. I'm going to do the same thing over here. And any of those places where there's still some vanilla, I'm going to try to color those up, cover those up. So now we have this one here. I am going to do the same thing and I will fast forward the video, but I'm going to give a layer of grass on my background piece. Okay, so I've just done the same thing. So now we have these three pieces of paper and you can see as this one's kind of blending together, This, these two I just used the brush tip on. This one, because I used the um, bullet tip, I was able, able to blend it a little bit. But now I wanna add it so it's not all one color. So on my background piece, I'm gonna use the brush tip of my color lifter and kind of swirl it around. And that'll just take some of the color out of some of the places. And I don't so mind so much the vanilla on the edge of my card because uh, it's on a vanilla card. And once you're done with this, I did realize you don't have to color everything up because it does obviously look, there's my cat bringing me a toy. What's up, bub? I'm up here. He likes to kill his toys. And again, I'm just gonna get this one here and then I may have to go back and give this a little bit more of a hit or maybe not it depends kind of on how it goes together what's wrong bubby you got your toy yeah you can bring it to me yeah he likes to kill all of his sticks he gets lots of sticks and he brings them to us so here that's good for our um grass and trees now for the sky, I am going to take balmy blue. So this is light balmy blue. And I'm gonna put it around the edges of my cabin. Because you know, when you cut with dyes, it doesn't get right to the edge. And this also helps with the illusion of there no longer being snow. And you don't want to color right to the edge, let it bleed up to the edge. So you can see I'm leaving that little bit of a gap and it will bleed to there. Again, using the brush tip because for this part, not doing any blending. We're going to do the real blending when we get to the, the cabin. And so now we need sky over here. Doing the same thing. So this is um, light balmy blue and I do need a new one. So I've got light balmy blue going on here. And then I'm gonna use um, light pool party, which maybe I have two of them. So I have two of them sitting here. Maybe one of them needs to, oh, this is a good one. So again, we're going for the same, just kind of blended look. And you can see the pool party is kind of the color of the pool. So it's a bluish green. And I like to kind of be the change between the grass and the sky. And because it's the light, you can use it to blend. 
And then I have dark balmy blue, I think, yeah. So this time I did opposite light to dark because I want to kind of keep it shaded right here to add to the illusion of clouds. And you know, you're all thinking this is a hot mess. Now we go back to the color lifter. And for this one, I'm going to use the bullet tip. And just kind of blend that out. I want right here in the middle to especially kind of have, it'll be a highlight for our cabin. But it'll also look like some clouds are there. And now to get those edges kind of, so they're not so obviously the end of where I stopped coloring, I'll blend those out. If you don't have a color lifter, you need at least two of them because you can see when I use it, I really use it. So blend this out. This is one of those cards for those of us that love the art of stamping. Some people are all about just making some quick, beautiful things. And some of us are about enjoying the coloring, pretending that we're six again. And then we've got our Crayolas. Okay, so we'll let this sit. And then if I need to do anything once I'm done with the cabin, I can come back and kind of add some color or um, we are gonna stamp over the top of that. Now, the magic of getting the snow off the roof is to make sure that you color it and we're gonna, you can see where like the snow's coming off the roof here. You need to angle that back so it's not, um, looks like it's dripping. So I'm gonna start with Dark Smoky Slate and all these places where there are lines, see this snow's coming off the side of the mountain. I'm just gonna make that be straight. And right here, just make that straight. So it does go, make the, uh, the roof a tiny bit larger than what it was, but we're good. Give this back its dimension. Cause you know, if you live where I do and you know snow covered roofs, everything gets an, its own magic quality. And I can't wait to use the stamp as designed, but I also wanted to give you a way to use it all year round. So there's some dark. And then we're gonna take the light smoky slate and kind of blend that around. Like this, I tried it, so I'll show you. I tried it with watercolor pencils um, and it kind of worked okay. It might've worked better if I'd started on vanilla and not white, but I did vanilla, I mean white, and it still, it looked, our greens aren't as masculine colored, I guess, as nature colored, because we have a lot of brighter greens in the watercolor pencils. So the whole thing just looked a little bright. And again, over here, where you can tell that they intended it to be snow, just kind of cover that up. Now you can see we've still lost that, that edge because it has snow on it and we don't want snow. So this will help take that off. So go back again with your dark. And just kind of darken the shadow where that that eve would be on the, the roof so we're already getting there and then i'm going to take my light gray granite and use it to kind of smear these around now and you do want to leave some white in there because if this was a design summer stamp, then we would have shading on it. So you don't want to take all the shading away, but just put it in the middle of the roof and not on the edges of the roof. So we have that little bit there, a tiny bit of shading there. Now you're going to take your black, which is my light because it's the light and dark blacks are black and just ever so slightly add that back in there. And I'm not making it straight because I'm not quite sure what angle that is supposed to be, but now you can see where I've added that line. And so the roof now has its shape back. Okay, now to do the cabin, they have these part, like there's bricks here, there's a little, I don't know that it's bricks, we just went to, um, on vacation in Illinois and the places along the 
Mississippi River up there, they looked like this. So I had that that I was kind of basing it off of. So anything that I thought might be brick, I did in um, cinnamon cider. So let's start with just a brush of the light. And then here on the side, and it's not so much brick um, as it might be like the darker wood. And then there were the little panels come around the wrap around the side, just give those a little bit of a swish of cinnamon cider. And right there again is a place I didn't, I forgot to add my black there, but this little drip of snow right here, you don't want to look like the roof's all the way collapsing. So just straighten that back up. So now let's go with my light and use the bullet tip. Kind of blend that in. And then I'm gonna take my um, dark crumb cake. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just add a little bit here. Where that, where there might be dirt mixed in with our grass. And that kind of tones all that down. I'm not gonna do the same thing on the trees. This is just for the, this. And then I'm gonna let this be the basis of my cabin. Kind of just give it a quick brush everywhere. And then I'm gonna to switch to my bullet tip to get these little posts. Okay, and then we have the stair, which is probably, you know, um, depending on when the cabin was built, it might not be concrete, but we're gonna go with the granite because it's my favorite color. So I've got the light granite. And I found for these, you don't really have to color in a lot because it's got that nice shading in the color. So you just want to make sure it's not just uncolored. And I'm going to do the same around the window, just so it has a little bit of a different tone. And then I'm going to go back to the dark gray granite and you can see where there's that shading on the stairs. Let's do a little bit of shading underneath. And when you're working in such small areas, it doesn't really matter if you start with a light or dark because they're just going to kind of mix. So I'm just putting this back over the top of where the shading is on the stamp. And then I have um, soft suede and dark, dark, dark and light soft suede. So I'm going to do bullet tip just kind of pull this suede in and mixed with the um, crumb cake it takes on kind of a suede mm, kind of a khaki color but mix it with the crumb cake and you'll be good I'm just going to get these highlights over on one side of the cabin right along the roof line and then we'll go back with the crumb cake because mixing the colors is a lot of fun and it does, it helps you get all that shading even when you don't know what you're doing. Because sometimes the way the light hits might not be the way we're coloring, but remember we're doing our six year old coloring enjoying. So if you know all about that stuff, then feel free to do it. But see, now we've mixed those colors and it looks really nice. I'm going to take my dark crumb cake again. My, um, Oh, I got light and I got the brush tip. I'll be super careful. It's a little, I didn't put quite enough. And then just because somebody's home at our cabin, we are going to take um, Daffodil Delight and this is the dark. I'm just gonna add a little bit of light glow, which is kind of just what that needed to set that off. Move all these out of the way and I am going to go with the pool party. Because again, it will be a nice blend between if it any if any of my clouds get too low to the the grass, and this will kind of take care of that. So 
Just add a couple of clouds. You don't want to go cloud heavy. Just kind of putting them over there where my paper is still kind of white. And then you can see them a little bit better. So we have that. Then there is a fence. There, so there's a fence die. There's a fence stamp. And then there's a die that cuts out the fence stamp. I am going to use the fence um, stamp. And right here where my grass meets the sky, I'm just gonna add that little background there. So now we have their fence. And we'll cut them out. And once they're all cut out and everything's put together, then I'll be able to see if there's any place else I need to fix up with coloring. So I am going to start with this one and let me show you how this works. So it's a super fun little stamp and it takes out the pieces by the window. So they don't, so they'll have holes in them, which is super fun. And then it cuts this fun little landscape. Now you want to make sure that you go in this way, that you don't go in the other direction because that would be um, what I call speed bump and it's not great for your dies. Send that through. See, there's no, there should be no kerplunking. And if you go the other way with it, then that line's going to do a little bit of kerplunking. So see how it pops out those there. And then I'm just going to take my snips and get that off the end because that's probably a little bit more than what I needed. But it just makes sure that, makes sure that when you're done, everything is colored. And then there are four leaves, uh, four trees. I'm gonna kind of put them on here so they all get a little bit of different variation of color. Just like this. And now, um, because I did try this, I'll show you, stay tuned to the end and I'll show you some of the stuff that I did that didn't work for this card. It would work on other cards. It just wasn't what I was going for on this one. So send these through. And then we are going to go to I'm 99% certain that this new, I think it's called Timber, and it is part of the suite, I believe. Um, I mailed my catalogs this weekend, and I only have my current copy left, and I took it out to the pool to work yesterday, so I'm not quite sure um, that it goes with this. So pop these trees out, and you're just going to give everything a little bit of... Timber feel. And then this needs the gray. And this is where we go for the art of it, um, of the stamping. Because I realize or it's going to end up kind of looking like a painting. Like my grandparents had a cabin on a lake. We called it a cottage when I was growing up. This looks like something that might have been on the wall. So now see we have that fun background and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stick this in here. And there is no snow on my cabin. So I'm going to take my gray granite. The color choices that you could do for this card now for your cardstock are, whoops. I want to send this one through too. So I'll fast forward that part of the video. There we go. So now everything has kind of that rustic feel. So I'm going to take this and it's going to go on the back of this. So you can see it's a little bit longer, not so much than it needs to be, but I don't want this white. But the fun thing is, is when you tear paper that has been colored with alcohol markers, see how it seeps through the paper? It gives a really fun ripped edge because that colors blood all the way through the paper. So you can cut that off if you want a straight line or you can tear it just like this and see how it has the, how it bled through. That's almost pretty on that side. Now when we put it on there, it adds a little bit to that dimension. In fact, I'm going to rip it right here. I'm super careful because I don't want to rip into my cabin. Give that a little bit of a dimension. So I'm going to start, I'm going to put everything on the background first. I do think that the Seal Plus works a little bit better on this because the paper is still a little bit wet. And when I did it with my regular Seal, between the wet paper and this really deep embossing folder, it kind of tore the paper. Not so, it was on the back so you could still use it. So I'm going to take my dimensionals. Give 
and raise my house up. And then that will give it a fun little effect where you can see those windows through. This die, for those of you that like to do the light up cards where you have a thing that you press and your card lights up, this would be a good one because you could get the windows and um, the edges to kind of light up. And put this down here. And now I kind of know what I'm, what I'm looking for. So I'm going to take my color lifter back. I want this to be a little bit white, whiter up here. So let's get rid of some of that color. Here, but see how I colored around that house? If I hadn't done that, then that would be vanilla and it would be a very obvious, this is where that's cut out. So I got that. It's looking pretty good. So I don't think I'm gonna add any of the other colors, but you can if something, see this is kind of, mm, now that I've seen it, it's kind of bothering me. So just lift this up. I'm gonna make that be grass there instead of sky. You could color your fence if you wanted to. When it was all said and done, I didn't think that it really needed that. And I could, I could go forever on these, so I'm gonna make myself stop. I'm just gonna add a little bit of definition back to where that separates there. And see, you can color on your paper that's been through an embossing folder. There we go, I like that better. Let's stick this on here, put it on here. When it's got that really deep embossing on it, it can raise up on your, when you put it through the seal. So that's pretty just like that, but wait till you see adding the trees on. So I'm gonna take my glue dots. Let's start with our big giant tree. On my other one, you do have, I had extra paper, so I ran one more tree through. I don't think you have to, and this time I'm just going with the dies that, the three dies that it came with. So let's stick a tree here. And then let's take our two other trees and stick them over on the other side. This one's gonna cover up a little bit more of where I didn't have much green. And I will tell you, it's all I can do not to splatter this card with some blends because it could use it, but that adds a little bit more to the arty effect. Um, and if we're going for a masculine card, then I thought maybe perhaps not. Uh, because I have four trees, I'm trying to figure out where to best put this one. Let's put it here. My other card had one more, so there's a tree here. So you could do another one because you have plenty of paper. So we have totally taken all of the snow away. Here's my other one. So it's gone. I think if I was doing it, I would run run one more tree through because it kind of does fill in that corner there, but it comes with three dies, so that's how many you get. So now let's look at a couple of the other things. Here is the fence, if you run it through just the dies. But when you add this, it's not really cartoony because I don't like to mix styles of stamps and this is not a cartoony fence. It just looks, it looks too cardstocky for the overall design of this picture. Now, if later when I go and I do this in some grays um, and keep that winter feel to it, then this would be a perfect addition. But for this card, you can see it's just a little bit too cardstocky. And again, I tried just the trees out of cardstock um, and they again were too, I wanted to keep the overall feel of the card the same. And by adding this, that didn't work. So there's that. Then I haven't run this through the die machine yet because I've been so busy. Normally I put all my dies through before I do cards, but I've been so busy. I'm just like making cards. Um, but this, I think that if you add it over the top of this, it gives the cabin impression. Not quite sure, so check back with me for that. There's some really fun dies, like I said, in this set. And then here is where I did the watercolor pencils. And you can see it looks fine. I took away all of the, the snow. Again, it doesn't look like it's a winter cabin, um, but the, I wasn't pleased with the, the offerings of greens that we have in the watercolor pencils. Now, if, if it was a spring card, maybe, because that kind of looks more like an Indiana spring thing. I liked this. It was dark, it was moody, it was a little bit masculine. Um, and let's go back and look at the cabin again. 
So here it is with all of its snow and all of the snow up to the edge of the cabin. And we've just totally made it a, win a summer card. You could even go into the fall. In fact, I thought about taking the clouds before I realized that the blends were doing well enough for me. This could be a bush. You could put, um, if you were doing these kind of colors, then stamp these in colors and change the snowflakes into flowers. And you could have some blooming little bushes here. That would work really well if your coloring base was ink pads because then that would go right over the top. And then here are the dies, not all of them, because some of them I've moved that I didn't use. Um, so you can see how it, I could cut that out. There was no re no need to on this. We have some more trees. You can do a tree scape with these and totally not have the cabin in it. And then this is my favorite part. I did not use the fox. The fox though, the die is laying on my table somewhere. I have to make sure not to use it. Oh no, I put it back on here because it's a little. Um, but then you can also do a escape so we can do layered panels with the little fox cut out the same way that the house did. So I I wanted to play with this because I'm seriously considering it for one of my online classes. If you're interested in taking this for an online class, then let me know. Sometimes I know sets like this don't appeal to everybody. So when I do my online classes, I like to pick ones that are generally everybody would want to do it. Um, but if you're interested in this, I think there's a ton of potential. And when you see the paper, then that just takes it up a whole way. So we could do like one year round card and the rest could be Christmas. So that's what I have for you today. And we'll, I'll probably do one or two more of my Christmas in July, Christmas in July cards. Um, and then I'm going to move on to our designer series paper, which is on sale this month. So make sure you go to my website. You can read all of the specials I have, all the thank you gifts, my drawing this month for a free set of Stampin' Rent markers. So I am going to do a card featuring markers. So that's what I have today though. Everybody have a great one and I'll catch you back here later. Bye.